Hey everybody, I'm Toby and this is Photorec.tv. Welcome back to another Monday Minute. In today's quick tip, I want to tell you the one thing I really want you to do when you import your photos in Lightroom. All right, we're gonna dive into the import dialog box and the one thing that I want you to do here is rename your files. It happens often that I'm helping somebody in one of my one-on-one -on -one sessions find lost files that are just disconnected in Lightroom. And we go to search for these file names and multiple images come up with the same file name. These numbers repeat after a period of time. For many of our cameras at 9,999, it rolls over and starts again. Now, for some of us, it takes a while, but think long term. Some of those folks that I help have been shooting now for over a decade and very easily have rolled over their camera odometers multiple times, or they've bought new cameras, and that number, of course, starts over, and then they have a lot of repeating file names. That's one reason why, to avoid repeating file names. The second reason why I want you to rename your files on import is that they become infinitely more findable if you use my custom text method. So again, here's a typical file name coming straight out of the camera. Now, Sony cameras and some other cameras allow you to modify that file name slightly. So I've stuck my initials in there at the beginning instead of something like IMG or DSC. But then we just got a number, you know, and it's just sequential, nothing more than that. And so it's really not helpful information. So in the import dialog box under file renaming, I always have rename files checked and I use this template called my import rename. And let me show you how to build that. You click it and click edit. Or when you click this and it comes to life, whatever one it's on, just go down and click edit. And I have the date in a year, month, day format, followed by some custom text, followed by the original file name. Let me show you exactly how to build that. When you go into this file name template editor, you have all of these little drop downs. Under additional, you have all of these different date time functions. We're just going to choose, I like personally, the year, year, month, month, day. So we're going to insert that one. Then I in, insert an underscore. I just type it in that little box. Now I want some custom text. So right here is custom text. I'm going to click insert. And you can see that right now it's untitled. We'll talk more about that in just a second another underscore, and now I'm going to insert the original file name. If you don't have a camera that allows you to modify the initials or change the letters here, you could just put in the file number suffix. That's just going to give you the numbers and it will drop off the DSC or the IMG, which, you know, makes it a little bit shorter. Oop. If you mess up like I just did, you can just hit uh, delete to delete that. So we want the file name. We're going to hit insert. Now, there we got, there we got our file rename template. Now I can click on this drop down and say save current settings as a new preset. So I'm going to call this Toby's import rename create. Toby's import rename. Now I'm going to click done. Back here on this rename, you might have not noticed this before, but custom text wasn't clickable. Now, because I have a sequence or a template that uses custom text, this is now a spot that I can type in. So I can type high ISO samples. And I use spaces, but Lightroom is going to be smart enough to help me out here and just put little underscores in there. You can mouse over the sample down here and see the full file name as it's going to show you. It does not use the date that you captured in the sample. It uses the, the current day. When you actually import, it will use the date of the photo's capture time. This is a long file name, but now it is unique and searchable. Inside and outside Lightroom, I can search for high ISO samples or high or ISO or samples. And this or these files are going to automatically come up. That's powerful and really, really useful. 
if you keep these file names when you export and upload to certain sites like Google Photos. They're going to also be searchable through those terms. Now, you might look at this and say, well, it looks like you would want to split a group of these and call them Archer, the dog, and then others are the high ISO samples. And if that's the case, if you are working with a backlog of a lot of photos and you want to bring in um, various photos and not have them all renamed to the same thing, then at this point you could unselect uh, those photos that aren't part of the rename, import, and then repeat that process. There are ways to rename after import. I'll show those in a future tip because sometimes I forget to add the custom text. And then I have a bunch of pictures that just have the word untitled in them. And there is a way to fix that too. That's it. If you found this tip helpful, give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe along with hitting that little bell to be notified of future tips, tricks, gear reviews, travel videos, and other stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.